Well, I want to thank all of you for being here on time. Again, feel free to show me your face, not show me your face. And um, I'm really glad to talk to you about the language of listings. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. And um, it's really helped me, you know, grow my real estate business and get control of my real estate business in the past 15 years. One of you, uh, actually, sorry, all of you have received right now, just jumping into some details, a participation workbook. It would have been emailed to you. I think uh, my amazing Tamara has also dropped it into the chat. And um, the goal here is that uh, you fill that out and really work on your listing presentation and uh, figure out where the opportunities to improve it are and what changes you might want to implement. Feel free to uh, just watch today. And like I said, I am recording this. I will share it on my YouTube channel. And so it's um, it will be content out there that you could reflect back on and make adjustments if you want to just watch. And so uh, as you have, mute yourself. That's fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Any questions that come up along the way, throw them into the chat box. And at the end here of the presentation, I will uh, take some time and answer any of your questions. And this is your time to work on your business. It's really, you know, you put this time aside, you're now here or in the future, you're watching this video. And um, we are in a world of, of so much information. There's a plethora of information out there. And I do understand and I do know that over the past almost two decades, one of the biggest differentiators between successful realtors or successful entrepreneurs in general are folks who apply what they learn. And so I really hope that not only do you get some value out of the you know, minutes ahead, but you are also going to apply it because that's most important to make changes. Okay, so in the past, I've I've surveyed from folks just like yourself who have watched this content and, and in preparation, I asked them, what do you want to get from the time ahead? And most people kind of, you know, things that come back or they want to get better at their at their listing presentation, making it more consistent. They want to have a better pre-listing presentation. They want to get new ideas on what to do in their listing presentation, um, how to take better care of their sellers, how to get some more standard standards into their business model. Of course, we all want to take more listings and just in general, I think, how to make a better listing presentation. And I'm pretty confident that you're going to get a lot of nuggets from the time ahead uh, by watching this and being here right now that you can implement a, a number of different things and achieve just some of these things that past learners wanted to get from the seminar. And so here's an outline of what we're going to cover in the, in the time ahead talk a little bit about the workbook, talk a little bit about myself, my business plan, and then we're going to jump right into what I do in, in becoming um, a listing expert and in with my listing services, how I prepare and perform, talk about post-performance, go through a whole bunch of listing uh, ideas that you could incorporate into your, uh, into your listing presentation. And then we're going to share the Kimbuna listing strategy, our pre-listing package, We'll go through my entire listing presentation. We'll then share extra how we process our listing. So once we have a listing, what are you going to do? How are you going to make sure you get it sold and that your client feels that you're doing an amazing job? So it sounds like a lot. It is a lot. It is recorded. You can jump back and forth in the future and, and dissect it and, and grab nuggets from it. Again, I'm a big believer in R&D. Rip off and duplicate what works for you. So please do that in your business. All right, let's talk about the workbook. So it's an opportunity right now for you to be working on your listing process. The intention, again, is for you to fill out, be really honest with yourself, like, you know, for everything from what are you, why are you a realtor and, and what are your big whys? What are you doing in order to get there? Um, take this time to work on the document. And I think if you actually fill it out, it really gives you a lot of clarity on where the opportunities are. My big why is real estate's my main uh, income generator. It's it's my business, it's my profession. I do have other companies as well. Some companies are more passive, some are more passion plays, but real estate has been for the past 15 plus years, um, my main source of income and it's funding my life and my family. I have a family of six, four kids. This is an old picture, but the kids are all still my kids. Um, and uh, I have really, over the years now, built a business that consistently sells a property every week and has been doing that for over a decade. And I do that with about 20 hours of work in my real estate practice. As well, the real estate team, the Kimbuna team does a sale every two days. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. 
Why do I share this with you? It's really powerful for me that when you take advice, we take advice from you know the types of uh, people that are in the trenches and that are doing it. I really feel in this uh, Amazon and YouTube world that a lot of people can be uh, you know instructors and many don't have a pedigree or a background of success. And so sometimes we're learning things that don't work. And I really hope that you get something from the time ahead. And I can tell you that everything I'm sharing with you has and continues to be successful day in and day out. Um, and I'm here to share. All right, my real estate business plan. And I think it's really important to kind of capture what is your business plan, what is like a, a high level overview of your real estate business. And everyone has a little bit of a different one. Of course, when we're first starting in real estate, it's just like anyone, anywhere, anytime, you know, we're agents 24 seven. And um, that eventually gets exhausting. If you're at that stage, power to you, you'll get through it. But as you're getting business into the pipeline, and you're doing transactions, that is a time for you to really get clear on how what type of realtor do you want to be? And what type of real estate business do you want to run? And so I love real estate and clients for what it provides for me and, and those successful transactions where I can help clients reach their goals and fund my life. And so I've been able to, you know, get a really top level real estate business that is supported and driven by being a listing expert that allows me to sell, you know, consistently a property a week for the past decade plus. And I do that by having four uh, sources of business, four you know uh, lead gen engines. First and foremost, I think everyone's primary uh, lead gen engine or business engine, so to speak, should be your repeat clients and referrals. So constantly servicing that and growing it. For myself, my other three business engines are real estate and um, an estate referral strategy. Um, my business associate and alliance network strategy and my lifestyle marketing strategy, essentially meaning, um, you know, I'm, I'm out there with my kids in, in the community and in things that I like doing. And um, I, I associate with people I give back. And through that, I'm getting business as a result as well. And so, you know, you can really steer your business in a direction that you want that fills your bucket. And the longer you are in real estate, what you realize is if you really did that earlier on to really figure out what are the sources of business that fill your bucket versus sources of business that you complete, but that drain you, it makes the profession much easier to manage on the long term. For those of you that aren't in the greater Vancouver area, one of my strategies, as I mentioned, was my realtor referral strategy. And so I I give away training such as this, where I'm hoping that you get some value from it. And should you have a realtor referral in the greater Vancouver area anytime in the future, I'd love to apply to earn that business. We service from Abbotsford to, to Surrey to Squamish, and we have a commission structure that's called 30 by 3, essentially meaning that we pay 30% referral fee on any business your referral generates up to three years from receiving it. And so it's not unusual where... I get a referral for a transaction in uh, in Vancouver, and you know the client does several transactions in the three year period. You get multiple checks, so pretty darn awesome. And again, I would love to um, you know uh, get your opportunity to earn your Vancouver real estate referrals. All right, so being a listing expert is really a way of taking control of your business. And when you get um, you know depending on where you are in your career. I know, generally speaking, a lot of new agents will get listing opportunities and we're, of course, nervous. We're trying to figure it out. But many people take quite a few you know, listings before they realize that they might not be in such great control of the whole process as they think they are. A lot of times the listings you get and depending on what your business is, it might be friends, it might be family, and it's almost like 99% likely that they're going to use you. And so you could get listings and you could feel like you're in control of your business when you really don't have a well-prepared or structured uh, process. And you really recognize that if you do enough business and if you start doing, you know, cold business where you're getting leads online or you're getting, um, you know, you're getting introductions and you have no background getting into that uh, opportunity, and then you figure out, okay, am I really competing against others? Am I performing at my highest level? So part of that is I really recommend to kind of take a step back 
And if you have done listings in the past, really audit yourself and figure out, you know, how great am I at this? Am I, am I operating at a professional level that, you know, I would be proud to go in front of my colleagues at my office and show them what I do or have other colleagues or agents follow me in the process. And they would be, you know, they would be impressed with my process and my style. Am I ready to compete? And the reason for that is it's really freaking important. You know, most areas in, in Canada, North America, um, a listing is worth, you know, 15,000, anywhere from 10 to 30,000, depending where you are and what the average price point is. And um, we sometimes forget that. We sometimes forget that we're there for, for a performance. We're there for delivery of a service and we might not be prepared. And so a simple reminder is that if you have listing presentation, make sure that you're setting yourself up into that moment, being, you know, feeling good, fit, feisty, being aggressive, being well-prepared because you have to nail it. And otherwise, if you don't nail it, you're going to start really developing bad habits and um, visualize that if you were after my presentation with you, I want you to get to a place that if you and I were competing for the same listing, that you feel like, you know, you have a really strong chance of getting it from me. And that's the place that you want to get to so that, you know, you're not wasting any of these auditions, any of these opportunities, because I can tell you the most painful points in my real estate business continue to be lost listings or lost opportunities where I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, take control. I didn't nail it as well as I could. All right. So right now is a little bit of thinking time. Uh, using your workbook, uh, think about, you know, in your marketing plan, in your listing process, what are the services that you offer? Um, a lot of times people just kind of, uh, agents kind of fall into listing process. You know, we've, we've seen professional photographs. We've heard of maybe staging, you know, we've heard of video. And so a lot of times realtors will selectively add or invest into services for their listings, for their listing process, based on what the client is asking for, or based on what's around them. And I really want to change that, that thinking with your business and bring it back to more to a structured environment. When a client meets with us, there are a few things that other people do, but most of those things we've either done in the past, or we have, we have invested into, or we have researched and we're deciding not to do it. I feel very strongly that my listing process, you know, covers 90 plus percent of all the things that are effective in promoting, positioning, and selling a listing correctly. And so I have analyzed many times and I continue to make tweaks in the services that we offer in our listing services. Um, and part of that is, are they realistic? Are they repeatable? An example of that is I have realtors in my office who personally stage each of the properties and do, uh, you know, appointments of decor and do consultations with clients. And they have amazing skill sets in that area. And they're passionate about it. Literally, the idea of staging a client's home is like pulling fingernails from my hands. I would never want to do it. However, I see the power of staging. I also understand the cost of staging. So you'll notice one of the things that I incorporate into my business services is involved in included in my business services for listings is that we do a listing staging consultation. So I pay for that. But anything beyond that, the client will need to invest into. And um, the reason that that's important, the reason I talk about it right now is you got to be realistic. What's realistic in your business and what's repeatable? Because you don't want to haphazardly offer different services to different clients that are selling because as you scale up, as you do more business, a few things happen. One, your clients will be talking to each other and there's nothing worse than you know good clients talking to each other and both of them having a dramatically different experience and then walking away thinking that one didn't get what the other person got. And then they have to be, you know, realistic, like you can't overspend on the listing and and run a business from it. And so it's a fine balance of what really works. What are the services that you offer that work? What are realistic? What are repeatable? Do they make financial sense? You know, there's a lot you could run a billboard for every single one of your listings that certainly would have some impact. But does it make financial sense? I don't think so. But you be you. And that goes into the next point that I want to talk about. Are these services that you offer, are they you? For example, um, if you're very, very social and you love hosting the neighborhood, 
a very easy way of separating yourself from myself as a listing expert or other realtors in your area could be a service that you offer on all your listings. You could offer like a neighborhood info service. What that means perhaps is that you offer any sellers that you work with, you tell them, hey, part of my strategy is that I'm going to personally door knock 50 neighbors around you. I'm going to invite them into a custom pre open house neighborhood open house where I serve crumpets and tea. And and uh, I, sh I share to your neighbors before the house goes on the market officially, all the you know amazing things about your home, because I want to have them as your sales force. And, and I love your neighbors. I love the neighborhood. Um, would that be effective? Yeah, I do think that would have a real impact on, on certain listings. Is it efficient and realistic in my model? No. Is it me? No, I actually don't want to operate that way. So something that could work for you if it is realistic and if it's you and if it fills your bucket could separate your listing process, your specialty from me quite dramatically. And so that's why it's really important, again, as you start thinking about your marketing plan, about your listing process, you have to you know, take into account the services you already offer, kind of the ones that are standard and expected, and the others, like are they repeatable? Do, do you have the money for it? Is it realistic that you're gonna do it again and again? And does it fill your bucket? Because as I mentioned, working long, long hours, decades, if they are, if you're doing things that don't align with your style, with your with your belief and your and your habits, eventually it's going to exhaust you, and eventually you're going to run out of roadway. You're going to run out of energy. All right. So in the in the slides ahead, what I'm doing is I'm going to brainstorm through ideas that people have in their listing process, in their listing, uh, you know, listing process that um, that you might want to incorporate. Some of these, hopefully, you already have in your business. Some of them I have, and after the brainstorming session, we will talk a bit more about the Kim Buna way and the Roland Kim way, and hopefully leaving you with a plethora of ideas. All right, so staging. Uh, staging works from you being a specialist and doing the full staging process yourself, where you offer a duo service, you're a listing expert, and you do the actual staging. You could offer a staging consult where a person comes in and and uh, that is a, you know, a professional at arm's length comes in for an hour or two hours and leaves your client with a detailed summary of what to do. You could offer in your listing service full or par partial staging included. Again, you got to figure out your numbers. And if you're working with a lot of vacant properties, you know, there's there's also virtual staging. Of course, you need to disclose that in the pictures because it can have some complications if, if clients don't understand that, you know, the, those pictures were virtual. But those are multiple different ways that you can incorporate staging into your listing process. You could provide services in addition or part of your listing and, and listing marketing process. They could be repair services. I know realtors who have handymans on call and they provide that as part of the service they offer in return for the commission they charge, where they come in and do small repairs and do little improvements. Um, I know realtors that provide pre-listing and post-sale cleaning services included into their listing uh, services. Some realtors provide moving services. It might be as little as providing moving boxes and tape, or it might be having an alignment with a moving service where the realtor invests into moving their clients as part of the cost that they uh, that they cover when a when a client you know chooses to work with them and and sell a property with them we all provide counseling services to our clients at different times you have no choice on that one that is embedded in all of our processes all right continuing the brainstorming on on what could you incorporate into your marketing plan you know ask yourself do you do professional photography do, do you you know the professional floor plans professional matterport again that's where there's a video that's been created that you kind of walk through a property it's different than a video because it's really controlled by the by the viewer and you can see exact 360 profiles of a property and matterports are very effective for me i really like them over videos you could create fun short you know, social media videos or fun, silly videos that grab attention. You could do virtual tours. You could have virtual open houses. All of these things, if you incorporate them into your listing process, you will need to make sure to document them and you need to make sure to be able to convey them and, and show it when you're at a listing table because um, most of the realtors don't do all of this. 
and several of them only do a few of them. And so it separates you from others and it allows you, you know, to gain more listings by making a really good job of showcasing how you're different. Uh, further ideas that you could do, you know, of course, social media, it, it, it everyone says they do it, but you could do it on, on multiple different levels. Um, you could have building or rather property specific websites that are just for that property. You could have, you know, uh, you could have styles of websites for different styles of homes that you have. You could have all types of different paid advertising that you incorporate into your listing process. All of this is your selection. You're in charge of your listing process because you're the listing expert. Make sure to remember that because if you let the client dictate what they think they want, they're often going to ask for things that you may not want to invest into, may not be that effective. Further on marketing, you could run radio ads. There are realtors that run radio ads, newspaper ads, to do printed mail outs in areas, do neighborhood flyers in a building. There are so many things that you can incorporate into your listing process that will separate you from other realtors that will be effective. You need to figure out, is it you? Is it scalable? Is it measurable? Is it in your finances? And does it fill your bucket? Other great ideas that sell properties, but again, you have to figure out how do you uh, incorporate it and what's relevant to you. You could do custom notepads of new listings and drop it off in an area. So there's a, literally a notepad with the picture that of a property that you're listing next week. You could have relationships with banks where you have listings exposed in there, or you could even have a kiosk in a bank where you're having a virtual open house presenting you know, your listings to um, folks that are coming through the bank actively door knocking in the area, actively calling, you know, realtors about your listing and cooperating realtors that you can mail to. You could distribute flyers to your local real estate offices around town. And of course, you could have public open houses. Some of these, obviously, public open houses, nearly most realtors do because they work, they're low cost, and they're manageable. Now, the other ones, not all listing agents complete because they cost more, they take time, they're not scalable, perhaps, and they're not repeatable excuse me, perhaps, you are in charge of your own listing process. You get to decide what you're going to do. Furthermore, you could have realtor open houses. You could create unique open houses or events where you have uh, like a barbecue or you could get, you know, you could have a, you could have a, I don't know, you could have like an Italian themed house that you're selling and you could get like a food truck selling, you know, um, Italian food, who knows? You could do pre-home inspections. You could offer storage services, do custom signage, have very custom building data sheets. All these things, should you do, separate you from other realtors. And you need to make sure, again, that you are going to explain that at the listing table so that the seller knows what it is that you do, knows what, um, what services you're investing into for the commission that they're paying. I'm part of an amazing team in the greater Vancouver area, the Kim Buna team. Again, we sell a property every days at least. Every one to two days, we're selling a property. And we've been doing that for 10 plus years, probably closer to 14 years now. And so part of our success has come, both myself and my business partner, Connie, early on in our career, we did a good job of entering the industry humbly and with an open mind. And we met a lot of successful realtors that we, you know, we sat down and we picked their brain and we, we, we figured out what is it that works. And what we discovered is almost every successful realtor is running one, one type of system, you know, whether it doesn't matter what their style is, as long as they're running a system and it's repeatable and it's them, success often happens. And so over the years, we have made very small tweaks to our listing presentation. And um, over the years, things have changed. We used to have a full spread in a newspaper. And we did that for many, many years. But now we don't do that spread anymore. And over time, different things became more important. And that's where we've decided to invest our listing dollars for each one of our listings into keeping in mind that we didn't dramatically make changes, you know, listing versus listing, but we made changes over time. Uh, because we spend time working on our business. And that's another real big takeaway. If you want to be uh, in control of your real estate, become a listing expert and spend a lot of time working on your business, not just problem solving in your business. All right. One of the things that we do really well is that we have a pre-listing package. Now you ask yourself right now, do you have a pre-listing package? Many of the people that have been in the business for a very long time do not still do not have a pre-listing package. And many have a really 
average one, if they even have one. What I'm going to play is a really short video, uh, totally unprofessional and, and kind of fuzzy, but it gets the point across. And the point that you want to get is that we have a pre-listing package. And what you'll see here is the pre-listing package often you know, gets the listing for us. The pre-listing package when delivered. So I will get a listing opportunity. I will field that conversation. I will have lots of questions and I will really get a clear overview of, of you know, the, the potential client's needs, wants, desires. And I'm, I'm focusing on much deeper than just the address of the property, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. And then um, within 24 hours, often the same day, myself or a team member will go and deliver a pre-listing package and deliver it to the client or hang it on the door. And our listing appointment will be one or two, three days later. And what the pre-listing package does is it sells myself to them. It explains that I'm qualified. It explains my track record and it shows them what we do. By the time I go and meet with them, if they've actually met with other realtors, nine out of 10 times, the other realtors have not had a pre-listing package. And the one out of 10 times where they have, I believe my pre-listing package outperforms theirs. And often I find that I'm able to jump right into a very easy listing booking versus listing appointment simply because of my pre-listing package has been delivered. The client watched it and they clearly notice that I'm different. I'm offering a professional service, a repeatable service. And if they hire me, they will get the same results. All right, let's watch this. As soon as we have a listing opportunity, we are delivering our pre-listing package either to their place of work in ideal circumstances, or we are bringing it to their home. And if no one's home, we hang it on their front door. And this is what they would arrive to. We have a very cool visual, digital copy, and we have a paper copy. So the paper portfolio they would look at. This going to have market information, trends happening in our area that they can reference in preparation for meeting us. There's a document called Agency Disclosure, which is required in BC. We have our Keller Williams Outfront Magazine in there. And then we have a seller's guide, paper version. Talks about the team, us being the top 2%. More about the team visuals on showing how we sell properties, talking about the Keller Williams brand, and then talking about the process of how we're going to move forward in selling a property, preparation for sale, and the process again. Some testimonials and questions that they could answer in preparation for meeting and then a breakdown cost sheet that we can review. So that's the paper copy, the cool copy, the cool tool that we have now, with this video free listing book. So this book arrives, looks kind of like an iPad, and they're like, hey, what is this? They open it up, and it instantly jumps to our pre-listing video. In today's market, it's more important than ever to choose the right people to maximize every opportunity when selling or buying your home. With the Kim Buna Group, you are choosing a trusted group of professionals who consistently exceed industry standards and yours. We know what makes your home sell, and we are with you every step of the way. I, I'd say our experience with Kimbuna was all very professional. But they respect the fact that it is your home. You're not just buying the property. And they really pay attention to that. Our proven marketing strategies allow us to best position your home for the current market conditions. It, it's not just lip service like, yeah, 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 I know what you're saying. But really gets your feelings, gets your understanding. So that understanding and listening was, I think, the art of the success we had in that transaction. We know what makes your home sell, how it is priced, how it shows, and how it is marketed makes all the difference. We provide a concierge service that will manage your listing process from beginning to end. We take care of every detail. When you meet with us, we'll get to know you to understand your selling goals. We will explain the selling process so that you know what to expect. We will come prepared with comparable property data to best advise you on how to position your property in the current market and maximize your returns. 
We go beyond industry standards, investing more energy, expertise, and resources to prepare your home for sale than any other agency. According to the Canadian Real Estate Association, 97% of buyers start their search online, and 78% of them are searching on mobile devices. The higher the quality is of the marketing elements of your home, the higher buyers will perceive its value. That's why our clients' homes receive the highest quality media marketing elements possible and a comprehensive digital strategy. Your home's media-rich campaign reaches thousands of potential buyers in your market across multiple platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Google, and more. When you choose the Kimbuna Group, you're hiring a team of professionals who actively manage the entire process for you. Our marketing systems provide you with the highest return potential for your home through a top-to-bottom consultation. We then create a custom listing plan which includes our sales strategy, market timing, as well as defining how we will communicate with you throughout the process. We schedule and manage every detail to ensure all actions are accomplished according to our high standards. We arrange a personal consultation with our staging team to give you an edge over the competition. Data shows that buyers spend less than 10 seconds viewing a listing to determine if it's a possibility. Our home staging can get you on their list. Produce a complete set of professional photographs, professional floor plans, and Matterport tours to elevate your listing from the competition. Potential buyers will have an opportunity to visualize themselves in their new home with these top quality marketing tools. Our in-house design team will create your professional marketing materials, including a custom for sale sign, complete with multiple photographs and key features of your home, a four page high quality feature sheet, and much more. We are known within our industry for our creative marketing systems and well-prepared listings. The marketing your home receives has one purpose, to reach potential buyers and lead to in-person showings. Before your home is even on the market, we leverage our amazing industry relationships by directly reaching out to the top volume agents in your area to give them details on your listing. Further leverage comes from the synergies we create at our Keller Williams Realty Brokerage through being the managing broker and owners of a thriving real estate office. Our focus then goes global. Keller Williams Realty is the world's largest real estate organization, and we utilize its size for your benefit by marketing your listing all over the world. British Columbia and the Lower Mainland is a world-class destination. Our team and its affiliations allow us to service clients in a multitude of languages. Just as important as what we do for our clients is what we do for our community. We believe that who you work with matters. The Kim Buna Group has made a lifelong commitment to supporting our local schools, youth sports, community events. All right. So, um... I think after watching that video, even after seeing it many times, I'm still impressed by it. Obviously, it was several years ago, much more hair back then. Um, but what you can see is it, it certainly showcases my professionalism and my abilities. And so when that arrives, I have a step above. I am in line for a really good listing opportunity. When I show up, again, um, I now with that pre-listing package and and even if you have like the the simple version of that, you're still separating yourself from the the competition. You'd be surprised how many realtors don't have any pre-listing uh, materials. Anyway, so when I show up now, uh, often um, I'm not even going through my full listing presentation as I will right now, I, or I do very quickly as I will with now. And what I would be sitting down with them is either on PowerPoint or. Uh, through the video or through a, a magazine that we have, I'm going to run through all the different things that we do in order to separate ourselves from the competition and in order to create repeatable uh, results as a listing expert. And what I'm what I often discover is of the different things that I'm about to talk about that when I sit down with a client, the client will move, the client will dive into certain things. They're like, yeah, my, my uncle's a photographer. He's great. It's really important. Or they'll they'll tell me what's important, excuse me, to them. And so what I'm doing is from that point forward, not only am I just pitching to them, I'm interacting with them based on uh, what's important to them, based on the type of personality they have and the style. The reason I'm able to do that is one, my pre-listing package has softened them up and has shown them that they are now meeting with a professional that can help them sell their home. 
and I have this listing uh, material that I'm going through that I can pivot in any direction that's important to them and go deeper or cover it on a very shallow level if, it, if I don't feel it's that important to them. But what I make sure is that my clients are not wondering what will I do if I'm given the chance to list their home, to sell their home. I make sure that I do that. And over the years, I have felt the pain of that too often. And often it's when you have friends or or repeat clients that you might not have worked with in a year, you know, in like five or six or 10 years. And you're almost sitting down at the table and and you're gabbing too much. You're jumping around and catching up on what's going on. And you know, you might not do a great job of running through the services that you offer in your listing process. And that often can be a detriment because they may sit down with another realtor that they don't have rapport with, but they have professional delivery of all the different services that that realtor provides. And they may, might be left with the idea that that other realtor does a whole bunch of stuff that you don't do. So make sure that you are clear on the services you offer and that you have the ability to pivot at the table and show you know the, the client uh, that you can go deeper and that you can also speed up depending on what their what their you know their their personality is in that moment. All right, I would talk to the client about you know the team. We have um, obviously I'm part of a team, but it's a special team because our team is structured that uh, although I have people that support me, I am always going to be the point person for my listing. So that client knows that they're not going to be handed around to a half dozen other people. There's an amazing support staff behind the scenes that make sure we deliver on what we say we're going to do, and we can offer a plethora of services that most people cannot. Um, but they're, they're, my clients are dealing directly with me. And so I continue to be that continuity of service. And that's really important because in that way, we're able to offer kind of the boutique service of a one-on-one -on -one realtor with the, you know, the behemoth engine that we have in the background. And, and I feel that's important. I'm really powerful. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of that service that we offer. I make sure to explain that. I'll tell the client, you know, that the majority of the realtors are not in the top 1%. We're consistently in the top 1%. And this is how I illustrate this. Um, in fact, this is old. We sell a property now every one to two days and have been doing that for well over a decade. You know, the majority of our listings get sold. That is important to share because a lot of sellers just believe that all listings that go on the market sell. And if they believe that, you have to ask yourself, how do they separate you from another realtor? You really need to be able to present to them the realities of the marketplace that they're in, the realities of their home, and how you are going to give them the best chance of maximizing the sale and maximizing the profits. Um, we explain that the majority of our business, 98% of our business comes from repeat and referrals and very little comes from other sources. That gives my clients confidence that, you know, obviously we've been able to scale a business through repeatable success. Um, we speak multiple languages. Although they're working with me, if they need it, other languages at the table, we have those available on our team. And depending on what market you're in, there certainly have been markets in the greater Vancouver area where speaking other languages was very powerful. And before I had this addressed, I might've lost a couple of listing opportunities because they felt I needed to be of a certain culture or speak a certain language. And now I've made sure that that no longer is a weak spot of our operation. If needed, we can advertise in international um, in international methods for international clients. Of course, I provide my clients with a current market analysis. Mine is very simple. It's five, six active properties that are competing against the one that I'm sitting down at potentially, five, six properties that have recently sold, and if possible, a few properties that expired. And that usually tells me a simple story of what we're competing against, what has sold, and what was overpriced and did not sell. And by keeping it simple, I'm able to get the client, the seller, to visualize themselves if they were a buyer, how would they price their home compared to the ones that just sold or the ones that we're competing against when we come to market. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking away all those one-off uniqueness situations where every seller thinks like, but my house is different. The reason it's worth more is because of this or that. And I'm really able to show them, hey, if you are a buyer and you didn't own this house, what would you pay for it given the environment you're in and given what's sold in the past? Seems to be very effective for me. I provide each one of my clients with a professional staging consultation. Again, that is part of our listing services that they pay for through our commission. And should they want a 
um, you know, staging completed after that, that would be something they discuss and organize through the stager. We do have a handyman that we lean into for little repairs that uh, if a client can't get them done in time that we can lean into and, uh, and assist us in getting a home ready. We have in, you know, we have a huge preferred and proven vendor service directory that we've built over the last many years. And don't take that for granted. If you've been a realtor that's around for many, many years, the resources that are in your phone book or in your cell phone rather, is um, is often underestimated, undervalued. If you're a seller, you're nervous, you might've only lived in the city for five, six years. There are many service providers that are needed in the course of selling a home or getting it ready that they don't have access to. And it might be their number one question in their brain that they didn't ask about. So make sure to share with them all the different vendors that you work with, that you're in alignment with, that are part of the process to take the stress away from the seller. We talk about the professional photography that we do for every one of our listings. We certainly don't take any of our own photographs. We do professional floor plans. We do professional matter ports, professional videos. And um, in that way, we're always making sure that, you know, we're showcasing the property in the best possible light. The, you know, the feedback we often get from our clients who come through our listings is that, wow, it looks so amazing online, not glorified, not exaggerated, but it looks, you know, it looks polished and perfect. It might not be that polished or perfect in real life, but we've done our job. We've brought that person in. Our marketing is working. We list the property on MLS. Now you're going to say, well, we all do. You're right. All realtors will list the property on their own MLS. However, we do it as effectively as possible. In our MLS service, there's multiple ways that we can attach different documents to it, that we can fill out the right um, categories for fields that need to be filled. And so we're making sure that our listings show up as professionally as possible in all the right ways by having done all the right things. We do custom signage for all our properties when allowed by bylaws and stratas. And so our signage spends more time selling the property than selling the realtors. So what a great way of showing areas of a home that can't be viewed from street level on a sign. It costs us obviously more money. Each one of our signs are custom to that listing. We sell a lot of listings. That's a lot of cash that we invest into our properties. However, we believe that that is a differentiating factor that's worth investing into, and it makes the difference in what we can deliver. We have professional listing sheets that are full color, that are you know showcasing that property, that includes the floor plan and the photographs. We create what's called realtor packages. So we'll create a package for our listing that captures, you know, the floor plan, the property disclosure statement, key information about the area, the form B, and that is all put together and attached to the listing so that when a client is showing or when a buyer's agent is showing our listing, they have all the information in their hands. Let's say a buyer's agent is showing our property and they live far out of town. They may not know the area that they're showing. But with this package, they can get up to speed quite quickly and they can look like uh, highly professional and proficient in that area. So we're making our buyer's agents that are showing our listings look more professional and they're able to focus in on from this information on what's important with the with their buyers because they know their buyers. Right. And and so we're making it as easy as possible to do business with us. We do have some custom marketing materials that we uh, create from time to time at different open houses that show the property on the on the on the water bottle or on the on the candy bag. Just a simple, unique, simple way of further promoting our listings and separating ourselves from other realtors. We have strong relationships with different banks around town where the property uh, will be showcased. We distribute just listed flyers in the neighborhood to gain further exposure around the listings that we bring on board. We advertise everywhere we can online. We spend a lot of money on Google ads and Facebook ads, and we spend a fair amount of resources on our staff that are populating all the information and making sure that we're getting everywhere. So from online, I think we do a really good job from you know making sure our listings are everywhere that they can be within reason. Uh, and here's an interesting thing, because if you're going to take this position and share this information with your prospective seller, uh, what we'll talk in a later step is how we show that is make sure you show it, because 
you don't want to be uh, committing to something that you can't deliver. And if you are going to deliver on it, you want to make sure that you show it to your client so they know they're getting what they've paid for. And when necessary, you know, we still can do limited printed ads. We're, we're not the biggest proponent of them anymore, but from time to time, depending on what the property is or where it is, printed ads are still powerful. At different market conditions, if it's a really stagnant market, we have in the past done buyer bonuses on our listings where either there's a extra commission attached to it if it sells within a certain time. Sometimes we create novel gift baskets that are showcased at the listing uh, seems simple. And it is simple, but it's a conversation starter. It sometimes uh, just is the thing that generates more attention at one of our listings where the buyer will get, you know, a fun little extra should the property sell within a certain timeline. If you are, you know, a seller selling a tenant occupied property and you're nervous about what the steps might be because the seller's never gone through it. One of the things that we share in our listing process is that we're experts at that. We have our own tenants. We've been tenants in the past. We understand the challenges that can come up. And one of the things that we do is for each one of our properties that's tenant occupied, we create this awesome little care package. We, we hide it. We leave it behind when we first do the photo shoot at a tenant occupied property. It's got a little note in there that says, hey, you know, thank you for keeping your home so tidy. When we kick you out of the home, please go grab a coffee on us. It's got coffee cards. It's got some cookies in it. It's just a really simple way of building rapport. And again, making sure that we can have access to that property by having strong relationships with the tenants. We run very professional open houses. Open house is another one of those things like running it on uh, or like listing on the multiple listing service. You can do it sloppily. I don't know if that's a word or you can do it professionally. We obviously choose to do professional open houses, be it agent open houses or be it uh, public ones. We do a lot of agent lead gen. And so because we have this amazing team behind the scenes doing all the scheduling, preparing everything, I'm able to pick up the phone and really call the realtor, send texts and communicate to agents who do the bulk of the business in the area where I'm about to have a listing. So I'm often generating interest and, and connections even before the property goes live. And I do that as well with the consumers. We have a Rolodex of, you know, of clients who are rather prospects who want a certain type of property. We constantly revisit that to see is there is there buyers that we know of that are looking for something like we have. Um, we talk to neighbors at open houses. We, you know, we really respond effectively to any communication that's inbound. And to that point, we have really effective communication with our clients. We have weekly summaries to each one of our listing agents, our listing clients, where we show them what has sold, what new listings have come on the market that's competition, thereby making sure that they're aware of the type of market they're in, that they never feel like what in the world's going on. I, I signed some listing paperwork, I see a, you know, a for sale sign in the yard, and I don't know what the next step is. We make sure that that's never the case. We provide specific points in time, 15 days, and then every 30 days thereafter, where our clients will receive a marketing summary. It shows them all the activities. It shows them the results that we've had from private showings and from open houses. It shows them examples of their home in the different uh, listing strategies that we have going. Again, making sure that our clients are never left wondering, you know, would another agent do a better job? Because I don't know what my agent has done for me. We want to never get there. We talk about our company. Whatever your company is, there is probably some really strong uh, value propositions that you offer. So figure out how to position on why you're with that company and why that can help you sell more properties. All right. So we've just gone through the listing presentation <laughs> and I've wrapped up that meeting. I'm now leaving. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what's my follow-up. Okay. So I will leave that home. I will shake hands and say, thank you. I will pull away. And within, you know, 10, 15 minutes, I will pull over and I will shoot a thank you video. And I will text that to the, cl to the prospective client saying, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I will reiterate some key points that have come up. Then within 12 hours after that, or within that time frame since meeting with them, I will make sure to email my, my prospective client and hit on a few things that were presented as concerns by them to make sure that I'm coming up with solutions. I will make sure that that same day I met with them, a thank you card gets dropped in the mail that they get the next day. And I will call them within 24 hours. And then after that, I will send consistent market update 
messages at least every week on what's happening in the market or, or find ways of contributing value to that prospect. Again, if that seller prospect was talking about needing to declutter or needing a new roof or needing repairs or foundation or whatever their concerns might be, I'm going to go and find ways of helping them. And so I'm constantly um, adding value to that prospect while they're, you know, quote unquote, in the hot zone until they list with me or they've decided to go with someone else or something has changed. And it's really important because, again, same way as I really value the opportunity of having the audition to sit with a prospective seller, I also value my own time. And if I've just gone through that whole process, I've invested hours and hours of preparation time. I've met with the seller. I want to make sure now that I'm going to get the listing because I honestly believe if someone lists with me, they're going to get an amazing service. They're going to get great results. Of course, there's tons of amazing realtors out there, but I have no doubt that I can do the job. So if I've already met with someone, I think I should have the best opportunity to move forward. So your follow-up is important. Ask yourself on your worksheet right now, what is your follow-up? Many of your follow-ups aren't that great, if at all. And this is possibly where you're missing closing your listing opportunities if that's a problem in your business. So that isn't a problem in your business. You got the listing. Now what? So a lot of you will instantly jump to like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And that's great. But are you communicating it? Are you showing your seller now that they have become your seller from a prospect, all the things that you're doing? So we've really broken the process of getting a listing and the client touch points into three stages. So stage one would be preparation and marketing the listing. Stage two is once we get an accepted offer on the listing, all the steps we do around that. And then once the subjects have been removed by the buyer, we know the deal is firm, the deal is happening in a, in a future. We now have stage three. All right. So stage one, preparing, marketing your listing. So we will send an email to the clients thanking them for choosing to work with us. Um, when we do the photographs and Matterport and video, we'll send them another email showing the, them their, their content. And often our clients are like, oh my God, this looks so amazing. Uh, you know, it looks better than they're expecting. Sometimes the client will come with feedback that they want certain other angles, certain other pictures. Perhaps we took photographs at a really awful time of the year and now it's sunny. So they might want some changes. The point is we're sharing that information. We're proving to them that we invest and that we do what we said we would. And we're getting feedback from the client. So this is all the steps even before it's listed. We will share with the client the prospective potential public remarks. Some of our clients, most of our clients say it's great. Some clients will now jump in and say, you know, they want some changes. What it shows us is what type of client are we getting into business with? Some folks might have been really reserved and quiet up until this point, And now they're, at, you know, providing us with a ton of feedback on how they want the property description to be. And that's important to know. One, you want to make sure that your client is happy that they that you didn't just list the property with your property description when they're the type of client that really wants to have influence and they're at home stewing. And if the property is not selling, then they think, oh, my gosh, it's the property description that sucks. And that's why my home hasn't sold. So, again, we send this as part of the pre-listing uh, process to get the client's buy-in. Then the property is listed on the MLS and we share that link to the client so that they can share it with their, you know, with their friends and email it to people of importance and give us feedback on it. Um, we'll send them examples of their listing sheets, of their signage. We'll send them links to all the social media channels and, and, and areas that their home is listed. We'll send them examples of their paid ads. Um, we'll send them an example of the realtor listing package so they can see where their home is uh, or how their home is presented. And um, again, you know, we'll we'll show examples of the listing sheet. We'll show different uh, different programs like Ellie Report that we're utilizing to to promote their listing and make it more digestible by buyers. Here's an example of Google Ads that we're running for you so they can actually see that it's happening. Um, we will provide. Monday morning updates and Wednesday updates for each one of our listing clients, just to make sure they never feel like there's a lack of communication. Um, and again, we provide a comprehensive marketing summary every the first 15 days at the end of the first 15 days, and then every 30 days thereafter. So stage two, we've done such a great job that the listing has an accepted offer on it. We're now at the beginning of stage two, which is again, from the point of an accepted offer right until subjects are removed. 
in my local Vancouver area that typically is seven to 10 days. And we're outlining to the seller that a lot of the things that have to happen are outside of their control. We're going to coordinate it. And it's really in the hands of the buyers. But with our help, we're going to coordinate it. We're just making sure that that seller at that point doesn't feel like our hands are off and that they don't know what's going on. You always need to you know, future cast, what are the next steps? Where are we at? What are the things that we're working on? Um, even if that person, that seller doesn't have anything they need to do at this stage, they really need to be communicated with and they need to visualize, especially if you run a business like we do, where we're offering a high touch service, you need to make sure to continue that right through the process. Um, so stage three, exciting. We've re The buyers remove subjects. The seller knows they're gonna sell. You, the realtor, know you're going to get a paycheck. It's a win-win. Now, often there's you know weeks, if not several months, between removing subjects to possession. And that's a period of time where you as a realtor can feel like, I've done an amazing job. I've nailed my role. My client's happy. You know what, though? You might have been offering so much communication, so much value, and then you go silent for three months, and your client in that process has had questions, has had concerns, um, has maybe not verbalized them, and you know, that might be compromising your repeat business, might be compromising referrals that you didn't get. And so we're just making sure that without overwhelming our client, because no longer do they need to actively be selling, we're sending them reminders about what the steps ahead are. We're making ourselves available. We deliver a subject removal gift. And then a few weeks later, we deliver another gift, which is branded boxes with branded tape. Again, it's a nice gift for the client. It's also a way for us to check in to make sure that the client doesn't have pressing questions that they haven't verbalized to us yet that we haven't been able to address. We will then keep building up to uh, you know the closing. We will outline all the key things that still are outstanding. If they don't have um, different service providers, we uh, bring service providers forward that they you know could choose to work with to complete the transaction. And so we're constantly providing a full service, um, full service service. So I've rambled on here now for quite a bit of time. I am going to stop the recording. And then I am going to um, see if there's any questions. One moment.